Welcome and thank you for joining the Macquarie GIG Green Energy Conference 2021. A compelling program of speakers awaits you. And we're less than a month from COP26. And in a moment, you'll hear about the progress made since the Paris Agreement in 2015 and why this year's gathering is so important. We already know that Glasgow will be different to Paris. We all want to see world leaders raise the ambition there on climate. But it's not about reaching a single agreement as it was six years ago. We now have that framework. And while government leadership remains crucial, the wider context has changed. We have broad societal consensus on the need to act, the destination we need to reach and the steps we need to get there. So the challenge now is execution, how we come together to deliver a transition at a scale and a pace that takes our communities with us, creates new jobs and keeps the essential goals of Paris within reach. So I want to spend my short time today on what we see as the five big challenges facing us and around which corporates and financial institutions are ready, willing and able to act. First, accelerating the deployment of mature climate solutions. that striving scale in wind, solar and electric vehicles across all geographies. Second, supporting the development of emerging but essential climate technologies and solutions that will enable deeper decarbonisation. Third, enabling a managed transition for carbon intensive industries supporting the companies and people who work with them to deliver their transition and avoid damaging disruption. Fourth, redefining our relationship with the land, from decarbonising agriculture to advancing nature-based solutions. And finally, adaptation, making sure that new and existing infrastructure is resilient to increasingly extreme weather. So let me take each one of these in turn, set out the challenges and opportunities as we see them and where we at Macquarie are raising our ambition. So I'll start with accelerating the deployment of mature technologies. The pace of renewable deployment needs to accelerate from around 250 gigawatts a year today to more than one terawatt by 2030. Now, the good news is that renewables are now the cheapest form of new generation in almost every part of the world and investors' interest far outstrips project supply. So the economics are on our side. Where governments set clear ambitions through NDCs and net zero targets backed by strong and sustained policy commitments and investor-friendly enabling environments, the private sector can direct huge pools of capital towards wind and solar increasingly without the need for public subsidy. However, some important challenges do remain. All governments must now prioritise renewables in their energy generation mix and respond to a world that is long on capital but short on projects. We need to remove the bottlenecks that hold up project development and we need to acknowledge the gap in progress between developed countries through emerging markets and into developing countries where the lack of enabling environment for private capital remains a barrier to investment. We are honoured to lead the important work with the Climate Finance Leadership in Initiative in India and with the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero to mobilise the private capital needed to give these countries the confidence to commit to more ambitious NDCs. It's vital that we make progress in this area at COP by governments fulfilling a long-standing pledge of 100 billion in annual climate finance, by better aligning the work of MDBs and DFIs to work alongside private capital, by building strong country partnerships and platforms, and by seeing the private sector respond with investment. Globally, Macquarie's asset management business is working with its clients and its portfolio companies to deliver decarbonisation solutions that will help the world meet the energy transition. And in our GIG business, we've created a global leader in green asset creation. In four years, we've supported the GIG business to grow from its UK base to build a 30 gigawatt, 240 project development pipeline spanning 25 markets now. 
We believe that this powerful combination of investing institutional capital through our asset management business and our asset creation in GIG is the right blend of capability to rise to the challenge. We're working to develop and finance storage and smart grids to support the smooth transition of renewables. And our asset finance and Australian retail banking businesses are bringing the transition to people's homes, supporting their purchase of electric vehicles and the installation of charging infrastructure. Electric vehicles are now well on their way to cost parity, creating a positive feedback loop with the renewable and grid energy storage. Now, while the urgency to deploy wind, solar and EVs and storage projects is critical, we know that it is not enough. So my second area of focus is the need to support the commercialisation of emerging climate solutions and technologies. And as the IEA Net Zero report sets out, the transition will need much more than wind and solar. The key focus will be on electrifying whatever we can and adapting the grid to adjust, shifting to sustainable and storable fuels like hydrogen and delivering the promise of carbon capture. And while the private sector is engaging in all of this, it's vital that governments connect ambitions to detail plans, policies and support mechanisms. With the right market environments, the private sector will invest bringing the scale and innovation that drives down costs. Like the rest of the market, our progress at Macquarie is at an early stage here, but we've engaged across each of these technologies, confident that whatever the final mix of the climate solutions, a significant step up investment is needed across all of them. On hydrogen, we're working with partners in the UK and Australia to establish hydrogen industrial clusters. Through Macquarie Asset Management, we're investing in portfolio companies like Cadent in the UK to trial the introduction of hydrogen to the gas grid. And GIG is connecting renewables generation with the production of hydrogen. Then on carbon capture and storage, we're working with clients in in the energy sector to advance finance for new projects. And our CGM business has taken a stake in Storega, a pioneering CCUS company that is leading the development of the UK's landmark Acorn project in Scotland's North Sea. And more broadly, we're working with a range of governments to support their work on policy frameworks to advance these new technologies. And one example is the Australian Technology Investment Roadmap, which we've been pleased to support in building momentum behind hydrogen, grid reliability, CCUS and green metals. And while this shift to new technologies is already seeing an exciting group of businesses form, some of our largest existing companies will play a critical role in using their revenues to invest in this innovation. The transition of oil and gas majors to become low carbon energy majors is one of the best examples of this trend. The finance sector has an important role to play in supporting the managed transition of carbon intensive industries through active engagement. The framework is being set by the rapid adoption of corporate net zero statements supported by growing clarity around industry specific transition pathways. These commitments are a vital trigger for actions that will guide the transformation of our private sector over the decades ahead. Importantly, commitments need to be supported by greater transparency and disclosure to allow the market to better understand the climate risks and to give communities confidence about delivery against intent. So we're working to support our clients' climate ambitions by bringing the full suite of Macquarie's capabilities together to help them, not least through Macquarie Capital's market-leading renewable and infrastructure advisory business. And I expect this area of client decarbonisation solutions to be a major area of focus in the years ahead. On the topic of net zero, we at Macquarie made our own commitment earlier this year to align the group's financing activities to net zero by 2050. Our asset management business has made a market leading commitment to manage its portfolio, the world's largest of infrastructure assets with net zero emissions by 2040. 
and the detail behind this commitment is important. All portfolio companies will have a net zero aligned business plan within two years. Our commitment to engage, hold and work through solutions is an important principle. Taking the example of quartz during the span of our typical 10 to 15 years of ownership, we can reduce emissions from truck idling, add renewables, electrify equipment and diversify activity to reduce reliance on coal revenues. This all helps to protect jobs and reskill communities for the new economy. We see this example play out in other energy intensive industrial assets, greening their power supply and gas grids introducing low carbon fuels. As part of a whole economy transition, we must redefine our relationship to the land through decarbonisation of agriculture and advancing nature-based solutions. And the role of the land in our global net zero ambition is hard to overstate, encompassing issues around water, pollination, food production, waste management, and of course, carbon removal. This relationship demands careful thought as to how we balance our needs against maintaining natural systems and biodiversity. With 4.7 million hectares of farmland under management, we're working to improve soil health, reduce the emissions intensity of production and introduce energy efficient technologies and practices. And in advancing nature-based solutions, our CGM business has launched a new global carbon business with a focus on growing a high integrity voluntary carbon offset market. We believe that this market, although in its early stages and always as part of a commitment to reduce direct emissions, has a vital role to play in channeling private capital to some of the most hard to finance parts of the transition, like developing countries and nature-based solutions. Now, while the first four points have focused on climate mitigation, my final point is about the need to radically scale up investment in adaptation. We sadly don't need to look far for the tragic human and economic costs of our changing weather, all happening a decade earlier than previously feared. As the world's largest infrastructure manager and the custodian of critical transport, utilities and communications infrastructure, we understand the priority attached to adapting. That's why we've been an early supporter of the work of the Global Centre on Adaptation. Private sector investment in adaptation and resilience happens through good stewardship and planning, like designing flood prevention into new infrastructure, burying power lines, and utilising geospatial technology to mitigate the risk of wildfires before they happen. But while good stewardship is important, it isn't enough. We need to see progress at COP on financing vital new climate adaptation infrastructure that doesn't currently have a revenue stream. For example, how will we finance the seawalls to protect us from rising tides? So there's no shortage of challenges on our road to net zero, but the difference between the COPs in Paris and Glasgow is clear. Communities, cities, countries, companies and colleagues share a commitment to act on the climate crisis, to reach the destination of net zero and to advance the practical solutions we need to get there. And we at Macquarie know what can be achieved when objectives are aligned. It creates a powerful partnership that accelerates action beyond what previously seemed possible. And that's our opportunity now. That's how we raise ambition, by acting together. So I want to thank you for joining us. We hugely value this opportunity to connect. And I'd like to thank our clients for allowing us the privilege to support you and the Macquarie staff who are driving our commitment and innovation with purpose and with conviction. We're looking forward to seeing some of you in Glasgow. Thank you.